So why don't we? Um, why don't you walk us through the equipment that yeah. and describe uh, what it is and and its purpose, and then you know maybe in cases where you know, can you use grandmother's pressure sure. cooker canner? Yeah, or do you absolutely. really need to buy something newer? So so one thing that's really important for viewers to understand is that. Um, Food preservation is a science, not an art. There's a tremendous amount of microbiology involved here, and so it is very important that you get up-to-date resources as well. So, so if you do have an older canning book at home, or perhaps the book that came with your grandma's canner, you wanna make sure that you look at the publication date, and that should be 1988 or newer. And in 1988, there was a tremendous amount of research that came out um, about processing times, and so that's really um, a very important date. There have been small changes in um, recommendations for canning since then, but those have been mostly for quality sealing rates and things like that. Okay. And so um, look at those publication dates of your older resources, 1988 or newer, and if you do have something that's older, um, come into the extension office or go online and get some new resources to use. So that's step one. Um, step two is to make sure you have the right equipment, right? Mm -hmm. There are really two different types of ways that we process to can home food items into jars, okay? So um, one is using what we call a boiling water canner. And this right here is the boiling water canner. And generally speaking, when you purchase one, it looks like this, it's sort of the granite ware but you don't have to have one that looks like this. For a boiling water canner, really all that means is that it's a pot of boiling water. Okay, so like <laughs> so a Dutch oven would be Any okay, pot or? that you have in your kitchen, a, soup, big soup a pot, big soup mm -hmm. pot will work. The only thing you need is you need a rack on the bottom so that your glass jars aren't sitting directly on the heating element okay. of your stove. And so I have an example of an improvised rack right here. Oh, this is just a steamer, steamer, a vegetable steamer mm -hmm. rack, right? So you could simply um, get a regular old stock pot and put your vegetable steamer down in the bottom, and that will work as a boiling water canner. Now you just, the other thing to keep in mind is that it needs to be deep enough to completely submerge your jars. We want that boiling water to be able to heat all sides of the jar, so it needs to be deep enough. So this one obviously would not be deep enough to do a quart size jar, yeah. however it is deep enough to do a pint size jar. So you can get a pint in there and cover it with water. Um, so that's important to know. So again, you're gonna look at your good quality tested instructions and look in there to see whether or not you need a boiling water canner, which is this one right here. Right. Some people also call that a boiling water bath. Boiling water bath. Or the other option is that you may need, depending on the food that you're preserving, a pressure canner. Okay, so this and that's over here, this right here. That's our pressure canner right there. Um, and so this is what a dial gauge canner looks like. Obviously, it has a dial here at the top that's going to tell us um, what pressure we're canning at, which indicates the temperature. Um, it's also going to have a little what we call this right here is a vent port, um, and that's where the steam comes out until you cap it off and then the pressure is allowed to build inside. Okay. And so the big difference here is that boiling water, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So we, we also have to make adjustment for altitude there, but generally speaking, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature at which water boils. Okay, that, that's an important number. Um, because the main thing we're concerned about in home food preserved items, the scariest thing that could potentially growing in there is something called Clostridium botulinum, which is a tiny spore which produces the botulism toxin, and mm -hmm. it is a neurotoxin. So people might have heard about botulism, botulism before. Yeah, Some food items are a risk for botulism, whereas others are not. So green beans, are they sort of the big culprit with botulism? Well, they're not necessarily the biggest culprit, but they're definitely a risk mm -hmm. for botulism. And so the acidity level of the food is what determines whether you can can it at 212 degrees Fahrenheit in your boiling water canner, or if it's a low acid food, then you must can it in a pressure canner because under pressure, we're able to reach temperatures higher than the boiling point. And so we're able to reach 240 degrees Fahrenheit in our pressure canner, 
which can then kill and inactivate that botulism spore. Okay. Okay, so some foods that have to be canned in the boiling water canner include jams and jellies, fruits, pie fillings, and pickles, and tomatoes, as long as they have acid added to them, okay. following your instructions there. Foods that have to be canned in the pressure canner are vegetables. So we have our um, green beans there and some carrots. Those are required to be canned in the pressure canner, but also meats and especially seafood. All of those foods are required to be canned in the pressure canner because those are the ones that are highest at risk for developing the botulism. Okay, and then I would assume poultry also, like all, all yeah, meat, meat all type, meat, yeah. seafood, yeah. Yeah, beef, yes. yeah. Okay. And really, a lot. Of, some people are really nervous about using a pressure canner. Everybody has sort of one of those horror stories of somebody that you know, their canner blew up right. in their house or something. So in our classes, um, we always chuckle about those, and we do the horror stories first, <laughs> and then we get... Then, yeah, you yeah. reduce the class to half size. <laughs> <laughs> we, we laugh about it first, and then we, we get hands-on practice yeah. using a pressure canner, understanding how it works, how to be safe with it. There are safety mechanisms built into the canner so it won't blow up, um, and so they're very easy to use. Um, but again, some people are nervous, and so yeah. if, you're, if people are, want to use a pressure canner but they've never done it before, they can certainly look for um, a class, uh, a food preservation class. They're offered by several different folks, including the Extension Service also offers food preservation classes. So you can get more hands-on and, and learn how to do it and feel more comfortable. Great. Well, I'm already feeling like, oh my gosh, this, you know, <laughs> this, could, this could be a little overwhelming, but I, I mean, I know that I, I've... It, you know, you've assured me that it's pretty easy. Yes. And uh, so let's also show our viewers how easy it is. So, right. you know, they've, they're armed with equipment, they've, they've got, so, so could somebody um, use one that, uh, could you use a, a pressure canner that had belonged to a mother or, or a grandmother? That's I mean, a great question. That, That's an excellent question. I mean, the, the 1988, does that apply that, to That doesn't equipment? necessarily apply to equipment. Okay. So there are many, many folks out there, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends, who have canners, pressure canners or boiling water canners in their basement or in their garage. And I'm sure if you ask around, you can find somebody that has one that's just collecting dust. And so um, don't buy a new one if you don't have to. You know, find one. And then another service that the extension offers is um, I test dial gauges in my office. So I have a master gauge so we can test your gauge. And those should be tested every oh, year yeah, for safety sure to make sure that they're reading the correct temperature on there because that's very, very important. And we can also take a look at your seal to make sure, you know, and if there's anything you need to replace, then we can make that recommendation and you can go to a local hardware store and get some replacement parts for them. There's some wonderful old canners out there that are actually really high quality, thicker gauge metal than some of the new ones mm -hmm. that are on the market today. So many of the old ones are still great and in great condition. So just bring it into your local extension office. Some hardware stores will also test gauges, so you kind of have to call around a little bit. Um, but you can definitely use older equipment and that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, well good. Yeah. And that's kind of part of the whole recycling, upcycling, bringing the community together, yeah. maybe get the equipment from one person, and just you know, to get, save maybe money. get the produce from right. another neighbor and then, you know, and then maybe uh, then you're the neighbor that does the preservation. Yeah. So, okay, so are we ready to um, bring out the apples, do you think? I think so. Yeah. I think so. So we're going to save our Canning Fruits publication here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get um, our apples washed and get them ready. All right. Okay. First and foremost, um, we want to practice good food safety, mm -hmm. right? Practices. So I wash my hands here. So always make sure you start with um, clean surfaces, clean hands. And then here for our apples, um, we're just going to wash these up here. And, and we have a variety, right? We do. So to, when, you're, when you're doing applesauce, it's a good idea to have a, a variety of different types of apples. So we have some that are more tart and a firmer apple, and then we have some that are more of an eating apple, like a pink lady or a, or a yeah, gala. Like a pink lady, yeah. And this is a, a Granny Smith. So another good thing to do with your produce is to use a clean vegetable scrub, just so any residue that might potentially be on there, we're just gonna make sure we wash them with cool running water and use our vegetable brush there to make sure they're nice and clean. And you always wanna start with good quality produce. Um, food preservation, preserving things, canning them, 
is not going to improve the quality. If you started with something that was already bruised or overly ripe, um, your applesauce is going to not taste as good. Yeah. So food preservation isn't necessarily a way to salvage <laughs> produce that's sort of going bad, but um, certainly it's a way to preserve the freshness so that you can enjoy it during the winter. So well, good. clean apples, clean All hands. Right. We're ready. So now we have to peel them, that's right. right? So I have a fun little gizmo here, which is our apple peeler. So this one's um, over the hill. It's been around for a long, long time at our extension office. So this is just an apple core and it peels the apples at the same time. So you don't have to use the paring knife. That's and right. And then I also would just want to mention pre-treatment solutions. So we all know that when we peel an apple, it will brown mm -hmm. um, if we just leave it open to the air. And so what I have prepared here is a pre-treatment solution that just has some water and then some ascorbic acid in it. And so there's several different options. You can use some lemon juice and water. You can use a commercial um, fruit fresh type product or you can also just use crushed up vitamin C tablets because oh. vitamin C is ascorbic acid mm -hmm. and so it will also prevent the browning of the fruit. And so we're just going to peel our apples up and then we're going to stick them right into our pretreatment solution. So we're going to load our apple here onto our peeler and hope that it works right. <laughs> there we go. And this really does make quick work out of your apples. So is there anything a person, if they didn't want to just compost this for a, a lower grade use, is there anything a person could just do with the apple peelings? Just with the peelings, well, some folks like a little bit of peel in, in their sauce and it would be okay to leave a, a small amount of the peel on. Um, really, you know, use your imagination. If, if folks have another use for it, that would be fine. Not so much in food preservation. Generally speaking, in our classes, we always ask, who has chickens at home? Yeah. And then that's, that just goes to them and to the chicken pile. So we're back to the chicken thing. I know, I know. Every, everybody <laughs> in Portland, you know, it's Portlandia. Call We've got them, chickens. Call them the chicken. All right, here we go. So you can see how this little gizmo um, peeled and cored so our apple beautiful. very nicely. So we're just going to take those and then drop them directly into the pretreatment solution so that they don't get overly brown. Okay, and you can take this one off. And we can do one more here, just as an example. All right, so I should probably give that a few cranks. I think you I should can. try. Yeah, what yeah. do you think so? Okay, so what do I do here? I just push it forward and start spinning. Whoa. <laughs> I, my parents had one of these when I was a little girl. Yes. Now, okay, now am I, it looks like it's some. Um, might have to help it along here. Digging in a little bit too deeply there. You there you go, keep going. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm not very dexterous with the paring <laughs> knife, I have to say. So this That's is, okay. this is great being able to, oh, slide this back like this? How's yeah. that? There you go, keep pushing it forward too. There we go. There, okay, now I think I've got the hang there of it. There we go. Now I'm cooking with So that. you can see if you have a whole tree full of apples, you know, sometimes little gizmos like this are a nice help in the kitchen. Otherwise, you know, you just have to enjoy the meditative process. Of apple <laughs> I should say so because, <laughs> or have a large family and have all the exactly. kids come and do it, huh? Exactly. So how's that? That's, Is that that's pretty good. We'll just finish her off there. There we go. So we'll drop those right in there. So then once you have all I'll of your, your apples, chef here and take care um, of the compost. apples ready to go, then you can go ahead and get them on the stove. Because basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cooking those apples down so that they're nice and soft and tender so that we can just smash them right up. Some people, um, after they're ready, like to put them through a food mill. I'm kind of one of those chunky applesauce people though. Yeah, me too. So I like to just cook them down until they're soft and ready to smash. Okay, and how long does that process take about? Um, about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how big of a batch you're doing. Okay. So depending on how big of a pot you've got. Um, and so while these are waiting to go um, in the pot on the oven, you just wanna make sure that they don't get overly brown. So just keep them in that, in that solution. And what rule of thumb is there for um how many apples or how many pounds of apples, you know, it, it convert the conversion to how much applesauce you'll get out of that. Oh, absolutely. So in our, in our publication here, it does actually have a nice little chart that you can look up to see how much um, you need to make, like, for example, one can or load okay. of applesauce. 
When I do it though, I kind of just take all my, I just do it all at one time and, um, and just buy multiple cases of jars and just keep going. Applesauce is one of those things where um, because there's not a whole lot of ingredients, it's just apples, mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily have to measure very carefully as opposed to jams or jellies where there's a lot of ingredients yeah, the coming ratio, together. Right, so you the... do have to measure very carefully for those products. Okay. okay. All right. So um, we had some apples that were already cooking down over here. Um, and so these are ready to go here. But I also wanted to mention for viewers that while your sauce is cooking, that's the time when you should be preparing your canner and preparing your jars and lids and rings so that when your sauce is ready all of the other steps that you need and items that you need for canning are ready as well yeah. okay so we also so have it probably right takes here, a while to get the knack of the, the timing it it does a little bit it does a little bit but there's not a whole lot that goes into it so right here in our canner that's already on the stove it's on low heat and it's already been warming and inside here I don't know if you guys can see that but we actually have our clean jars, jars that we've Chilled washed water. really well and rinsed really well that are heating. Um, and so I'll just pull one out real quickly so that you guys can see that a little bit better. So these are in here warming in the same water that we're going to actually can our applesauce in. They are actually warming right here. Because when you um, fill your jars with the contents, the applesauce is going to be very hot. So you never want to put a very hot, boiling hot product into a cold jar. Sure. We don't want to kind of heat shock our jars. Yeah. And so they're already warming here for us and they've all been cleaned up. So now let's take a look at our sauce that's been right. cooking down, our apples that have been cooking down here. And it looks now like it they're doing pretty wonderful. good. smells wonderful. So these are just plain old apples that we've cooked down. Um, and we did add a little bit of water to that Should just to help them water? along a little bit tilt that a little bit so you can kind of see that so there's it's still a bit chunky so I'm just gonna take my little potato masher here and I'm just gonna smash it up a little bit and then Sherry do you like cinnamon in your apple sauce? I do okay yes. so we'll put a little tiny bit of cinnamon in Go there as well list. not required certainly but you can add a little bit of cinnamon if, in there if that's something that you enjoy How's and that? How's that? that's that's looking great yeah. so okay. we can stir that up and then I also have a little bit of local honey here that we can add for a little bit of sweetness. And again, in applesauce, um, you don't have to add a sweetener to it if you want it to be just plain old apples, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and so then we'll just smash it up a little bit more and mix it all together. Conveniently, I'm on the wrong side of the stove, so you're doing all the work. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the boiling <laughs> bath there, so it's a little difficult for me to that's reach all right. that. But. Okay, so we just want to stir that in together that honey and that wow. cinnamon that we added there I love that level of chunkiness now yeah and so will that um, will the level of either chunkiness or um, you know however if it's more of a puree mm -hmm. that will that maintain that texture it after should it's now just remember that when you can things when you put them in the canner we are going to be boiling it at 212 degrees Fahrenheit so it will cook a little bit more but with applesauce, you definitely want it to be um, fully softened and the texture that you want it before it goes into the jar. We have a fairly short processing time in the canner, which is only going to be about 15 minutes. Mm, okay. So it's not really that much longer that it's going to cook. Okay. And that compares to how long for some other types of foods? Oh, it depends. I mean, really wide variety. Some tomatoes products have an 85 minute processing okay. time, so it can be <laughs> yeah. really long. Um, and that's or interesting fairly because short. the tomatoes, um, it, and it has to do with acidity, right? I mean, because a you know, the tomato is so much um, softer than an apple, so it's not related to texture. Of, it does of depend on how you pack it in the jar, though. Mm -hmm. Some tomato recipes have you cramming a bunch of tomatoes in a jar without any added liquid, and that lengthens the processing oh, okay. time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, it looks like we have enough for maybe about two or three jars here. So we can just demonstrate how to pack a jar with applesauce in it as well. All right. So we'll pull out a couple of jars. So we're just going to pull out one of our nice hot jars out from the liquid here. And we'll do a couple of jars. We'll do one for you and one for me. How about that? All right. That sounds wonderful. Okay. Yeah, one of the hazards of uh, 
being in a kitchen for our studios, that the aroma is just uh, <laughs> Okay, so here we go. So, Sherry, have you ever done this before? Have you ever packed a jar? You know, I'm trying to remember because I think I'd mentioned to you, I grew up, my mother did, uh, you know, quite a bit of um, food preservation in the home. I mean, freezing, canning, pickling, never did uh, um, drying, but... Um, I don't really remember helping her too much. Well, here we go. You Maybe get to other practice. than like staging. Maybe drying the dishes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here we have a couple of jars that we're going to fill. Um, some other essential equipment, which is very helpful to have, mm. is a yeah, ladle. Or, pardon me, a ladle and a funnel. Uh -huh. And these funnels are specifically made for canning, yeah, so they I fit can, right in see. your jar really nicely. Um, we also um, have this fancy tool right here which is called a bubbler and this is to get the bubbles out once we fill the jar so we're going to practice using that. Um, we also need to prep our rings. Rings um, are really easy. These can be reused uh, from batch to batch. You just want to make sure that they don't have any rust on them. So these are rust free and we don't really have to heat these or anything first. These can just be here right, nice and handy. We do have, however, these are what we call lids or flats. Some people call them flats. And those are single use, right? And these are single use. Yeah. You have to get new ones each time you can. There's the sealing compound, which is this red part here on the bottom side. Um, and then, of course, the top right there. And we do need to heat these a little bit. And so I just put a little bit of the hot water from the canner over mm. the top of them. Okay. You do not have to boil these in advance. In years past... You I did have to boil did, them. Yeah. Now that you mentioned that, you I might remember, remember my mom that, used to right. boil those. But these, the sealing compound is um, softer than it used to be. So it just needs to be warmed, not boiled. So you always want to make sure that you read the manufacturer's instructions that come with your lids and rings and jars too, because mm -hmm. that's good information to follow as well. And so when you, when you read the box of your little lids, it'll say, don't boil, just warm. All right. Yeah. So we're just going to get a little bit of this warm water here. So these can be warming for us right there. So we've got nice hot lids and regular rings. And now I'm just going to bring this applesauce over and I'll have you pack a jar. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So do you know if there are any trends in terms of um uh, you know, are the pint jars are they becoming are they maybe more popular with home canners these days? A lot of folks have smaller families now, and so whenever you're canning, you want to make sure that you ha keep in mind, how am I going to use this product? Um, am I really going to use up a whole quart of applesauce at one time? Mm -hmm. um, or do, you, do I have a small family, so should I just can in a pint-sized jar? Yeah. At my house, it's just me and my husband, so what we're going to do is we're just going to use a pint sized jar because that fits the needs of our family. Right. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I don't know if um We're gonna fill it I, all the way up. Okay, so I need to these need to be filled up a little more. Yeah. And should I more. should I jiggle the jar a little bit so it's settled? Yeah, you down, can jiggle it a little bit and then we're also gonna use our that, that, our uh, handy dandy bubbler tool as well. So let's see how good I've got here. All right. This one so this, so this one, one, one looks pretty good. Right. So one thing we should talk about right now is something called head space. That's the space that... From the food to the top of exactly, the jar. Exactly. The top of the food to the top of the lid of the jar. And so this one right here, you can see, is filled all the way to the top. That's actually a little bit too full. We want it to have about half an inch of head space. And head space is also called the boiling room because when these are in the boiling water canner, they will expand, the oh. contents do expand, yeah. and the longer the processing time, the more it will boil. So you said half an inch. So we went half an inch. So this little tool right here actually has a little measuring tool, so we can go just like that and see how, how high well, we that's need it to nifty. be. Oh. So we're going to take a little bit more out of this one, but yours looks like it might be So no just fingers about right. at this point? <laughs> Probably not. If it's at your own house, then. Not as big a deal. Okay. So you said this one's probably okay? Yes. Yeah, so let's yeah, take a look right. here. I think that's pretty good. Okay. All right. Let's show that. Let's just do that. If you could do that one more time just so sure. our viewers at home can see the how you're using the, with the bubbler. Is that what the... Yeah. So they sell these tools um, 
at, at any home canning store and it has these little measuring indicators right here so you can see if you I need see, yeah. an inch and a quarter an inch half an inch or just a quarter of an inch so in your canning instructions it will tell you how full the jar should be and this one needs to be about half an inch so I think on both of these we're probably pretty good there so now an important and sometimes overlooked step mm. we need to wipe the rims so I'm gonna let you do that all right so wipe the rims that's so just on the outside? The I'm top assuming. as well, okay. because we don't want any food particles to get in between the glass on the top of, of the jar and the lid. Perfect. And that one as well. Oh uh, yeah, there's a little bit right there, but you know, I have to say this is much tidier than I would have expected, you know, with the proper equipment and the setup. I mean, it's, yeah, it definitely so, helps to have the right tools for the job. I mean, so this is really much easier than, than I expected or, um, you know, what I imagine uh, many of our viewers might have thought as well. There we go. And it helps with the power of time lapse That's photography. That's right, where exactly. Our, where <laughs> apples were just ready when we needed them. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now you get to do uh, use another fun tool, okay. which is this one right here. So, so that is simply a little wand that has a magnet on the bottom. Oh, isn't that clever? Just and that's that. to lift the lids out of the hot water. So you're so not you don't touching to them and you're not burn burning your, your hands. Finger. And whoops. So okay. pull it right out there. One. Mm -hmm. This one wants to be twins. Wants to. There and you then go. Then you just plop it down. Put it right on the top. Okay. Nope. Great. Oops. <laughs> and then we're just going to put our ring on there. Okay, uh, this is where maybe it might be helpful to be skilled in archery because if you can hit bullseye, because <laughs> I'm not a bullseye now, this little thing does not want to come off That's the okay. lid. <laughs> pull it out. You just got two there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we have actually had in some of our classes before where two lids have stuck together, and then they, and we didn't notice it, and you still blew and it. It went through the canner and came out, and then the jars, that particular jar, had never sealed because it had it was too thick. two lids yeah. on it. So, so that is a so good thing for people to, to watch know. for then, right? Yeah. I mean, especially if, um, I mean, one of the reasons we're preserving food besides the, uh, um, the joy of the process or the nutritious aspect is also to preserve food so we don't want to waste. We don't exactly, want to waste equipment. Exactly, exactly. You don't want your effort to be for naught. Okay, so. Now we have two jars, they both have a lid and a ring on them. We want the, the lid to be what we call fingertip tight. So we, we don't need to get a wrench out or anything and really get it on tight. We want it to be fingertip tight. Okay. Okay. All right. And at this point is also when you could label the top of your jar. So for example, if you were doing two different batches where one had a sweetener in it and one did not, or one had cinnamon and one did not, you can simply use a permanent marker to indicate that on the top. Um, that way when you take them all out of the canner, you know what you did. Because sometimes if the jars get jumbled around in your canner and you don't know which one had cinnamon or not. So yeah. we'll just mark that this one had cinnamon and honey. And then the date, right? That's probably something important to put yeah, on. Yeah, the date is very important. And some folks like to make um, a fancier label, which is great. You can certainly do that. I, I do the low-tech low solution here. <laughs> <laughs> with, it works. Yeah, with just that. So we'll just put simply oh, yeah, like some a of the month, fancier month and a are. year on there is good enough. Okay. Yeah, so about how long is something going to last? Because obviously putting the date on is, uh, you know, people uh, are accustomed to looking at dates as expiration dates when sure. you buy food at the store, and that says consume by. This is actually a preservation date. So how long can, how long is this good to eat after that date? Right, so you're going to indicate the date that it was preserved and mm -hmm. processed on there, and that way in your own cupboard you can rotate. So mm -hmm. the foods that you preserved last year, you should try and eat up first, and then the mm -hmm. foods you preserve. Right. So you can kind of rotate your stock in your pantry. For best quality, you wanna eat this up within one year, but as long as it was processed correctly, it will be safe to eat for a good long time. Okay. And so when I say processed, what that means is that this has to go in the canner. It hasn't gone in the canner yet, right? right? We're not done yet. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna do that right now. So, we're going to take this right over here. And I guess one year kind of makes sense because next year you'll be repeating this process exactly. with next year's batch of apples. Exactly. And I'm actually going to have you fill 
or place oh them goodness. into the canner. So here's your jar lifter. So you trust I'll open me it up. with the equipment, huh? That's right. So you can see that, that the water is already hot. It's on low right now, um, but in turn, yep, you oh, got it. Like that? And um, you just want to make sure it's not yet boiling. We want everything to come to a boil together so the water can be hot in there, but just not quite boiling yet. And is it okay if the jars touch each other when they're in the boiling bath? Yeah, boiling it's, bath? it's fine if they touch each other. Um, and actually, you can also stack jars on top of each other as long as um, you have enough water in there that the jars are fully submerged yeah. in the water. So they're in there. They're nicely arranged there. And um, we're just going to put the lid on. And then we're going to turn the canner, or the stove rather, on high to bring it up to a boil. So about how long will this be sitting here now? So we need to high. wait until it boils. So of course the watch pot never boils, right? right? So, so we're, we're going to leave it leave it alone. As soon as we hear that it is boiling, then we can start our processing time. So in our instructions, we see that the processing time for pints of applesauce mm -hmm. is 15 minutes. So once it boils, it's going to be in for 15 minutes. All right, 15 minutes. Well, that's perfect. This is a good time for us to take a break. So let's go to the field with Paul Norberg. He's in Gresham at Organically Grown Company's Ribbon Cutting for their new facility.